Okay. Um, okay. So <clears throat> we've got a here we've got a hollow sphere. Um, a radius. Point one five meters, and it's on a thirty degree incline. Uh, the moment of inertia of the ball is zero point forty. Um, so it's given here is zero point forty kilogram meters squared. But if I remember correctly, if you use this value, it doesn't work. So instead, I'm going to use uh, 0 0.040 uh, kilogram meters squared. Um, just because if you use the 0.40, um, you get a negative, the speeds the question gives can't possibly work. So it has to be 0 0.040. Um, <clears throat> now, at a certain initial position, the sphere's total kinetic energy is 20 joules. So Ke is 20 joules. And now our kinetic energy is going to be uh, translational plus rotational. Um, so our translational is just one half mv squared, and our rotational is one half uh, i omega squared. Um, <clears throat> we know that our omega is um, v over r. And we are told we're given um, that our i, or maybe we're not given, but we can look up that our mode of inertia for a, um, <clears throat> a hollow sphere is two thirds m r squared. So we can write this as one half um, m v squared plus one half two-thirds mr squared times v over r squared. And I'm actually just going to rewrite this as ke trans just so that I can <clears throat> I can put this into some into some kind of fraction here. Um, Okay, so then um, we can work this through here. So divide by that, one third m, the r squared is gonna cancel, so v squared. So we get a third mv squared. Um, and so then, um, how did I work this through here? <laughs> um, so our, our rotational energy is one third mv squared, which is equal to, um, it's equal to two thirds, sorry, two, nope. How did I do this here? Okay, I should have uh, <laughs> should have worked this through a better way here. Um, uh, okay, what do I got here? So 
So I'm just going to work it through this way. Oops. So my KE total is um, KE rotational. Yeah, okay. So this is um, three halves. Okay, let's just multiply this by three halves. which is, will give us uh, one half mv squared. So that, which is equal to our ke trans. So our, our translational kinetic energy is uh, three halves of our rotational. There we go. So our KE total is KE rotational plus three halves KE rotational. So we have this. If we multiply this by three halves, then we get our one half mv squared, which is our KE trans. So that means our translational kinetic energy is three halves of our rotational. So if we put this into our total expression again, then we would get um, five halves, uh, Ke total is five halves of rotational kinetic energy, which is 20 joules. So then um, our rotational kinetic energy is um, eight joules. So that's how much of our initial energy is rotational. Um, <clears throat> we want to know what the speed of the center of mass of the sphere is at this position. So um, if our rotational is 8 joules, then our translational must be 12 joules as it's what's left. So one half mv squared is 12 joules. Um, or um, our v is the square root of two times 12 joules over our mass, which is given as, um, oh, we're not given our mass, but we are given that two-thirds of um, m r squared is 0 0.040 kilogram meters squared. So then our mass is um, 2.67 kilograms. <clears throat> meaning that our velocity is this over 2.67 kilograms, which comes out to be uh, 2 times 12 divided by 2.67 square root. So our velocity is um, 2.998 meters per second. Okay, um, so that's our initial speed. And now um, when we've moved um, one meter up the incline, so now for C, we've moved one meter up the incline. and it's at a 30 degree angle. And so then um, our height here 
is just uh, sine 30 uh, times our one meter, or our height is uh, 0 0.5 meters. And so then if we've moved one meter up the incline, um, we started with a potential energy of zero. Our kinetic energy was 20 joules. And now we've moved to a UF of um, MGH, which is equal to um, 2.67 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times our 0 0.5 meters, which is equal to um, 13.083 joules. Um, so this is actually the point where um, if our moment, moment of inertia was too large, then our, um, our potential energy there would be, would be negative, which doesn't make any sense, as then uh, the sphere wouldn't be able to roll up that far. Um, and so then our kinetic energy initial has to equal our final potential plus our kinetic energy final. And so then our kinetic energy final must equal our 20 joules minus this value, which is equal to uh, 6.93 joules. Okay. And then it wants to know the speed of its center of mass. Um, right, okay. Um, I don't know why I did it that way, but whatever. Okay, so if it wants to know the speed of its center of mass, um, we can either use <clears throat> our relationship between our rotational or our um, or our linear energy. So our kinetic energy final is our 6.93 joules, um, which is equal to five quarters of our I omega squared. And so we can solve for our omega as the square root of four fifths, 6.93 joules over uh, 0 0.04 uh, kilogram meters squared, which comes out to be 11.78 per seconds. And then we can get our velocity our tangent of velocity, which is also our center of mass velocity, as omega r, which is 11.78 per seconds times our radius, which is 1.766 meters per second. Um, <clears throat> we also could have gotten um, we also could have gotten the velocity directly from um, our kinetic energy final should be uh, th three quarters, one half mv squared. Um, sorry, three quarters of, M of mv squared. Right, I think, but or from our original relation here, so <clears throat> that are um, as our translational energy is three halves 
of our rotational or we could have used that our rotational kinetic energy was one third of mv squared. Um, but either way, that should be, there should be several ways to get a velocity from that. Um, okay, so we need all these pieces. Um, so we can get the mass as um, 2.67. Like I said, we kind of need the moment of inertia to be um, to be the 0 0.04. So there's our mass. Um, the initial kinetic energy that is rotational is eight joules. So then our initial speed is this three meters per second. Um, if we move up one meter, then we're going to be left with 6.93. And so our velocity um, again, we could have, we could arrive at it in several ways. So we could either use that our velocity is omega r to get 1.77 meters per second. Um, or we could use the relationship between our total kinetic energy and our rotational, um, which is what they've done here, and you still get the same value. So that looks good. Okay, and I'm going to stop this here. Um, and say that's all my questions for today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please subscribe to the One Class channel. Um, <clears throat> if you want to leave questions, please follow the links below the video. Uh, this has been Jeff Krause for One Class.